Type annotations, type hints, help make your code easy to read and it creates a smoother experience while you're coding. But what if you're doing data analysis and you're using pandas? Can you use type annotations then? Well, no. But there's something else you can do, which I'll show you today. Code that doesn't have any type annotations is actually quite hard to review. If you want to learn how to effectively review code, I have a free code diagnosis workshop for you. You can enroll by going to arion.code slash diagnosis. It's based on a three-factor framework and I apply that framework to actual production code. So you can see how it works. So go to arion.code slash diagnosis to get access for free to the workshop. The link is also in the description. Now, Let's dive in. If you've worked with pandas before, you know that there are two important data structures that you should know about, the data frame and the series. So the data frame is basically a table with rows and columns, and a series is a single row in the table. It's basically a pair of key values. And both of these, data frame and series, you can actually use as type annotation. So here I have a very simple example where I'm reading a data set uh, it's basically a set of products. And here I have a function that loads the CSV data. So provided with a path that comes from pathlib and it returns a data frame. So I'm using data frame here as a type annotation. The problem is that data frame itself and the series that are the rows in the data frame are each quite complex data structures. So you might actually want to specify somehow what type of series are in the data frame and what are the exact types of the different columns in each series. Ideally, maybe you want to do something like this, where we say like, okay, we have the data frame, but actually there is a string column and there is an integer column and there is a float column, etc., etc. Unfortunately, Pandas doesn't allow us to do this. And it gets worse because we might want to do even more than that. For example, maybe you want to specify limits on numerical values. Suppose that this is a quantity. So we want to make sure that the quantity is always positive. Or suppose that this is a percentage. So we want to make sure that the value is always between zero or one. Or perhaps we want to indicate that some of these values are optional, that they're not required in the particular entry. Or we might do something even more complicated like that this string is perhaps actually an email address and we want that string to be a valid email address for each of the rows in our database. You could even imagine that there are dependencies. For example, if we have uh, one field in the series that is supposed to be the country, well, if that's an EU country, we then want another field to be a valid EU tax ID number or something like that. So there's potentially lots of complicated things that we would like to do that go way beyond using type annotation. So that means that it's in principle not even that interesting to want to use type hints, type annotations as helpful tools with pandas, data frames, and series. We actually want something more, which is validation. And there's a really nice package you can use with pandas that does validation for you, and that's called Pandera. And I'm going to show you today a couple of things you can do with it. So let me remove this. So how does Pandera actually work? Well, the important aspect of Pandera is that you can define a schema that defines basically what your data is supposed to look like. And then you can use Pandera to validate your data according to the schema. And it has lots of different options, lots of different ways to define the schema. You can even infer the schema automatically from the data, as I'll show you in a minute. Um, and you can even use a tool like Pydantic in combination with Pandera so that you actually specify the schema using a Pydantic model and then you can actually rely a bit more on type hints, which is really cool. I've done a video recently where I compared Pydantic and data class and adders and there one of the things that Pydantic is really good at is validating data and that's compatible with Pandera, so that's really nice. If you want to learn more about how to validate data using Pydantic, check the link at the top. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, please validate it by giving it a like so that YouTube can suggest this content to others as well. So next to being compatible with Pydantic, which I think is really the way to go for validation, Pandera, Pandera also has a couple of data types that, that are already built in uh, things like booleans, ints, strings, etc. Next to that, it also has some data types like in 64 that are directly compatible with pandas because it's supposed to be a pandas extension. And what's actually also really cool is that Pandera integrates with fast API. So the combination of having pandas, fast API, Pydantic and Pandera is really 
really nice. And finally, Pandera has other integrations as well, for example, with Hypothesis, which allows it to generate synthetic data automatically. It can be useful sometimes. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of how you can use Pandera to do validation of your data. So in this example, I have no validation whatsoever, right? But we would like to have a way to add validation to the data frame. So one thing that's nice about Pandera is that it can actually look at existing data and then try to infer schema from that. So I'm going to start with that. I think that's the easiest. So here I have an example of almost the same code. So I'm retrieving the products from a CSV file. And then Pandera's, which I've added as an import here, then has a function called infer schema. And it gets a data frame as input, and then it creates a data frame schema. And what you can then do is you can write the schema to a Python file so that later on you have easy access to it. So when I run this, this is going to create a file called invert schema. And you also see there are some errors. I'll show you what that means in a minute. So the invert schema, that's basically this file. So this is what it has generated. So it's, it added the import already and then created something of type data frame schema. And you see that detected a number of columns like the invoice number, uh, the stock code um, description. Uh, there's a couple of other things, customer ID. Uh, you see it also automatically added some uh, checks. And not all of these checks make a lot of sense, by the way. So what you can basically do is once Pandera has inferred the schema from your data, you can then go through each of the columns and then check whether it actually makes sense. So what I did here is I have a, an adapted version of that schema where it changed a couple of things. For example, I changed the invoice number to a string or uh, I removed a check from the quantity because I only care that it's greater than or equal to one. So what you can also see is that Pandera validation allows you to do a lot more than just checking the type because we also have these kinds of checks that we can add to the schema. And then what you can do is you can use the schema that you inferred, or in this case, I'm uh, I'm using this altered schema. And then the schema has a validate method, which uh, takes, in this case, a data frame of products. This is the one that we read from the file here. And then what I did here is I specified that validation should be lazy. So I don't want this to stop validation as soon as it finds the first error. I want it to give a summary of the errors. So you see that it produces a sort of table containing errors. Well, it's not formatted nicely because there's like a bunch of uh, different values here, but Typically, this gives you an idea of the types of errors that there are in your data set. So once you have the schema, so as a first step, you infer the schema and then you adapt it to what you need, then you could actually very easily check new data sets with the schema that you have by using a decorator. So here I have an example that uses the Pandera check output decorator and we supply it with the schema. So that's again, loaded from the file that we created. And also here you can write that it should be lazy. And now when I call this function, it's going to check the data automatically using the schema that I provided. So when I run this, you see we get the same types of errors. So it provides again, the same summary, but now we use a decorator to check the output. So this all works fine, but I do think a schema like this is a bit cumbersome to use. And what I would actually suggest that you use instead is identic models and use that for validation instead. How does that actually work? I have an example right here. So instead of having this very complicated data frame schema that we had before, what we can do now is we use the schema model, which is very similar to how it works in Pydentic, and then create a new class. In this case, I'm calling this output schema. And then I'm simply supplying all of the schema elements as instance variables. So this is a much shorter representation of the schema. And since this is all built on Pydentic, you have exactly the same validation capabilities that Pydentic has. So for example, here I have a field quantity, for example, I can do something like pa.field. And then I can specify that I want this to be greater or equal to one. So now I'm sure that quantity is never going to be zero or less. So I find this a much cleaner way of defining validations. And Pydantic has lots of other options as well that you can use and that is directly compatible with Pandera. And if you use the combination of Pandera, Pandas and Pydantic, what's really nice is that you now have some extra capabilities in terms of type hints. So I have here again my retrieve retail products function that gets a path but you see it now returns a data frame and I can specify 
the schema that the data frame is supposed to follow. And that's because I'm importing the data frame type from pandera.typing. And now what I can do is I can again add a decorator here that's going to check the types for me. And that's going to use this type annotation to determine what schema it should use to check the types. So I think this is a really clean way of using schemas and verifying that the data follows a particular structure. And then what I do in the main function is that I have a try accept block. So I retrieve the products just like I did in the other scripts. And I simply print some information and I catch schema errors here. And then I print out the error. So when I run this, then again, we're going to get a very similar kind of summary that's going to give us exactly the same errors as we had before. But now I'm relying more closely on type hints, Pydantic schemas uh, to do the validation for me. And like I said, this fully supports Pydantic validation. So this is actually really powerful. So I hope this video gave you a basic idea of how to add validation to your data processing pipelines using Pandas. Let me know in the comments whether you've used validation like this before. Um, or if you'd like me to dive in deeper and you also want me to cover, for example, how to integrate this with FastAPI, just let me know and I'll uh, do a video about that. Now, checking that your data is nice, valid, clean is of course really important, but especially if you're processing big sets of data, then it's also really important that you know a bit about how data is actually represented in Pandas and what you can do to make that a bit more performant. So if you want to learn more about that, check out this video next. Thanks for watching and take care.